man. Oh, fat money. Did you have a story? No, I can fast forward. I can fast forward. <laughs> Welcome back to Top 5. My name is Jasmine and today we are in the Yates Gymnastics Center but at like the top in the exclusive section um, with one of the famous UCLA gymnasts, Caitlin Ohashi. Uh, so Caitlin, why don't you start off by telling everybody a little about yourself, your major, your age, where you're from. My name is Caitlin Ohashi. I'm from Seattle, Washington. My major is I'm well, trying to apply for World Arts and Cultures and but right now I'm a social major, and yeah. It sounds good. Okay, so instead of talking about gymnastics today, we're actually going to talk about something um, that Caitlin works on. You're, one of your teammates says it with you, correct? Yeah. Um, and they have a blog called Behind the Madness, and so we'll like, put the link down below, you know? Um, so Caitlin, why don't you tell everybody kind of what it is, how it came about? So one day me and Maria, who I do it with, we're just having a conversation about all the negativity around in the world, and it was kind of like, we have so much to be grateful for. So we decided to make the blog and we named it Behind the Madness because it's kind of like who's behind the madness, like thinking differently, and who is behind the madness in the world. Like there's, I feel like there's a lot. Get your blog on the homepage. Uh, there's a quote that says, Behind the Madness is a collection of writings in which we attempt to answer our own questions about life. Um, so when you're thinking about answering questions about life, it's really hard to do that personally, let alone in like a public light. So why did you think that this was the best way to capitalize your influence? We wanted to create an engaging and interactive platform for everyone to discuss their opinions and we try not to make it sound like we're right about anything because we want people to like give input in what they think is like right or wrong and whatever so we just yeah so going into kind of that like personal aspect of it um one of the main things on Caitlin's entries is she oftentimes includes are they diary entries from when you were younger I guess journal entries. Yeah, journal entries. Yeah, so they're journals that she wrote when she was younger, and then she like comments on the blog, um, on her like per portion of the blog. It's like her now talking about them and like reflecting on them. Um, so one of the things I noticed when I was looking at them, um, we just talked about this actually. I don't know a lot about gymnastics, but I do know about timestamps. And so we're looking at the timestamps on a lot of the journal entries, and a lot of them are pretty kind of sad in a way you know they talk about some pretty dark stuff in terms of like how you felt about your body how you felt about just like gymnastics in general and so there's this weird dichotomy where you're on the verge of becoming like one of the best gymnast gymnasts in the world um but also feeling like this utter like sadness and kind of emptiness about everything so during that time like what was the driving force that's like keeping you going because it's almost like you climbed to the top of the ladder and then you got there and it wasn't what i thought what you thought it was going to feel like there's actually a quote that I really related with. I think it was in a book called like Pretty Girls in Little Boxes. And it's like where you win and it's not even like an accomplishment. It's more of like you had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of felt like that's where I was in this time. Like I didn't I wasn't happy whenever I won. It was kind of just like okay, like an another title. I don't know. Um what kept me going, I guess I would say, was my coach and my like parents. Um, we sacrificed a lot. Like I moved my mom and one of my brothers across the country mm -hmm. to like train, and so I couldn't really just like give up and move back home and everything. So put a lot of pressure on myself and had pressure put on top of me. So I just kept going. That's a lot of pressure for like a teenage girl that's just like transitioning into life. Like, you're like 12, 13, right, when these things are happening? Yeah. <laughs> when I was 12, 13, I was like going to practice, but like barely, you know, like this is the early stages of track. I wasn't doing anything. I would like play with my brothers and like sleep. <laughs> and you're like training like 36 hours a week. Literally. Not yeah. going to school. Yeah, home being homeschooled. Schooled, traveling the country on the national team. That's crazy. Okay, so in one of your posts entitled Dear Voices, which is a part of your body shaming series, on your blog. Um, one of the quotes is, I started my period last month, which is just another reminder that I'm getting fat. Okay, <laughs> so I was reading this and I was like, at first I was obviously like, damn, like that's intense stuff for especially like a little girl. That's something that's like 
seen as like very healthy, very natural. So it's kind of a testament one to athletics, like the behind the scenes of it, because I think every sport has like their version of that, whether it's, you know, normalizing things that aren't, should not be normalized. So like that mentality shouldn't be normalized. Um, so when you look at that now, like what would you say to little Caitlin, who's like stressed about a very normal and natural like? I would probably first start by telling her you can't run it away. <laughs> <laughs> I would get on the treadmill and just run because I thought I could like get rid of it. Um, like the context of athletics, like when it comes to normalizing things and these like mentalities that aren't actually like healthy, like how are you as an athlete or especially like you're literally a little girl. So like how does like, how is someone supposed to like learn these things if like their coaches aren't telling them, if like they're forcing these ideologies onto you, like what do you do? Because I'm sure you weren't the only person that thought this. Yeah, that's a good question because like, I feel like from not going to school and just being surrounded by all these gymnasts that have the same mentality and then obviously coaches that don't exactly help it, it's a bit hard to like understand what is normal. I think having like parents that teach you about these things and maybe talking to like older people on the team about I feel like they have a better understanding of yeah, like yeah, what's yeah. actually normal. Um, but kind of going through that, and then I think gymnasts right now are starting to speak out a bit more about, I guess, like abusiveness within the sport. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that should help the sport a lot, actually. I think we're starting to flip it around and trying to get to a safer training and mentality for coaches and gymnasts. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully we see <laughs> some outcomes. So going off of like this mental aspect of the sport of gymnastics and just sport in general, um, you have another post that I just read and it was called Dear No One, This Is For Me. And you talk about pretty heavy stuff in that kind of blog post as well. And one of the things you talked about was like your depression last year. So obviously last year you're a collegiate athlete and this is something that I personally have dealt with and a lot of other collegiate athletes that I know with deal with. Um, is depression regarding like whatever is happening at school and so when you look at that um, how did you learn to kind of overcome that and like get back to having fun? Um, so I did start seeing CAPS which is our counseling and psychological services. Shout out to Dr. Trisha, she's my therapist, <laughs> she'll watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but no that for sure helps like having someone to go to um, Someone actually messaged me a little bit ago and they asked me how do you maintain a surrounding like that kind of helps you and I was like you can't really control anyone around you and as much as that sucks like it's hard to rely on people all the time mm -hmm. it's like you have to find things for yourself so I found that like writing and running like really helped me like get out of my head and like clear my mind sort of thing. Um, so just like finding something you really enjoy by yourself and just kind of like rely <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. great okay so our last question actually regarding kind of this gymnastics realm is when you look back at your career now um obviously it's still going on but you look at all the little girls and boys that you inspire and now the like older girls and boys that you inspire um what is your definition of success currently my definition of success would be having fun and enjoying life to the fullest every single day. Um, I actually just created like a manifesto for my class and it was basically to enjoy everything I do and love it and use my voice and encourage those to use theirs as well because I have lived a life where I've had neither of those things. Okay, so top five tradition. At the end of top, every top five video, we. Um, are going to give you like a top five category and you're going to give us your top five. <laughs> okay? Okay, so give us your top five favorite places that you've traveled. South Africa, um, Italy, <laughs> oh my oh, Cancun, that was fun. Cancun. Cabo, I picked up a bird there. <laughs> Like literally picked up or like well, took it okay. home? I took it home. I took it back to the apartment. Okay. <laughs> or not the apartment, the hotel. Okay. I named it Nookers. It had a broken wing. Did so you nurse like, it back to home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But then I was so sad when we had to leave. So my mom like stuck it on the plane. It was bad. She, she like, can't say you need to get it together. If we're speaking plane. I, yeah, she her put it, She put it in her pants, walked through security, it was fine. <laughs> and then it died. <laughs> on the plane. So oh. um, on the plane. She went to the bathroom to give it water. And she was like, she didn't know what to do. She was like, do I flush it down the toilet? Do I throw it in the trash? <laughs> I held this bird for no reason because it died. That's horrible. And California. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> California. You like California a lot? <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of any California other like out of. Can we get a city? Out of this in California? Yeah, we got a big radius. Westwood. Yeah. Westwood. That's good. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like if I were a visitor, I'd say like maybe Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. Like now it's like different because like we're here, but you know. So yeah. I feel it. That's fair. That's fair. Well, thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be sure to put all of Caitlin's social medias down below in her blog, so make sure to follow her on everything. Um, follow Top 5, and we'll see you next week. Go Bruins.